Okay, hi everyone and um, welcome to this this webinar, this week's webinar. Um, so today we're going to look at um, stress management and some relaxation tips. Um, I think this is quite relevant at the moment just from I suppose what myself and Kiva are experiencing with students this week. There seems to be more anxiety and more yeah. more stress going around. Um, it could be due to you know how there's one week shorter in this semester compared to other years and the workload um, might have kind of increased per week um, and I suppose we're coming near the end the end of semester uh, one so there's a few weeks left I think it's just over three until we finish up for um, the Christmas break so um, there's a lot of assignments and continued assessments to get in um, and then I suppose the exams in after Christmas but what I would say to you is try and concentrate on your you know assignments and everything first and then you have quite a good stint over Christmas to kind of look at um, your exams. So I suppose the plan for the session today is just a kind of brief um, summary of what is actual stress um, how to recognise the stress and helpful ways to manage stress. Um, so I think the first thing is that we all experience stress. It's a normal feeling. Um, it depends on the situation. It depends on other things as well. Um, and I suppose it's how you manage stress um, and, and how you are resilient and everything. You can get things done and overcome it. Um, yeah, so it's a normal feeling. So what is stress? So stress is a feeling of being under abnormal pressure. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and things like that, and it does affect us all in different ways. Um, some people might have more physical symptoms, some have more like mental um, kind of thoughts and things under stress. And it is a, a natural reaction. So I suppose it is a biological um, thing in our bodies and um, yeah. that, that causes us our heart rate to increase, um, you know, our breathing to, to become faster and things like that. So I suppose it's the fight and flight um, whatever that's called the fight and flight fight or flight so i suppose when we were back in the cavemen times and um, we either had to fight you know and um, the predator or you run away so it's that kind of you know them kind of things biological that that are trying to trying to um make you act or run away and try and keep you safe so they're still there but i suppose we're not in them in them times anymore but with exams or assignments and things like that. So um, it's definitely still a very normal um, thing that everyone has to cope with. So I suppose we're going to use Mentimeter again today. So if you can go to menti.com and type in 76049540. Um, I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. So. I suppose the first question is what causes you to get stressed? So they can be general kind of things like assignments or an exams or um, presentations or social events, COVID, and um, they can be different kind of things. So what do we have here? So we work and uh, nerves, anxiety. Yeah, anxiety and stress can be kind of linked as well. Um, yeah, so there can be different situations where where um, people get stressed and some people might get stressed more than others in certain situations um, there's performance anxiety assignments yeah that's another big one this I think this week is a it's a week of where there's loads of assignments due yeah. um, do you find that as well Kiva yeah definitely yeah this week is yeah. a busy week I think mm, and I suppose the, re the remainder of of semester will be will be quite um will be quite stressful for students. So yeah, job interviews, anything that's kind of, you know, you're highlighted in. So people are looking at you and, and, and observing you. If you have a performance to do, if you're on stage, public speaking, um, all these situations can cause, um, can cause stress. And you can see there, there's a variety. So it might be different for different people what, what causes them the most stress. So potential triggers for stress, and we won't dwell on these too much, but there's external and internal stressors. So there's major life events for external work or school relationship difficulties, 
financial problems and being too busy and managing your workload internally so they kind of your own kind of thinking habits so being pessimistic and inability to accept uncertainty rigid thinking negative self self talk and unrealistic expectations or perfectionism so these are kind of internal you know unhelpful thinking habits that can cause you to get stressed um and you can dwell on you know the the more negative side and then that causes you to get stressed so the second question so what happens to you when you get stressed so do you find that um your heart rate increases do you find you can't sleep you have headaches um you can't concentrate and um, you can't manage your workload is there kind of things that happen when when you get stressed yeah so we have feeling scared heart rate increases sick um, and it's recognizing them and i suppose it's noticing them as they come recognizing oh i'm getting a bit stressed here yeah, we have hungry, so some people turn to food to manage with their stress and cope with their stress. Stress, um, so with poor sleeping, um, and getting very tired, so fatigue. So it can it can cause different kind of you know things in in your body, and it's just recognizing them, trying to recognize them at the very start of it, rather than it going on too far, and say, oh, I'm getting stressed, and I need to you know, do some relaxation tips or whatever that we're going to cover here. So symptoms of stress. So just as as you said there, so there's different cognitive symptoms such as memory pro problems, concentration problems and constant worrying. Then there's emotional symptoms. So there's, you know, anxiety um, low mood, feeling overwhelmed, isolation. So that can cause stress as well. Other symptoms can be, you know, aches and pains um, and behavioural. So we had the eating more or less, sleeping too much or little, withdrawal from others, procrastination and also leaning to alcohol and other kind of forms of, of coping and nervous habits, you know, nail picking and things like that. So they're, I suppose they're just to recognise and I don't want to dwell on them, but just just to recognise them. Yeah. So factors that influence your stress. Uh, tolerance level so we have the resilience model there and it's all about kind of trying to manage everything that comes so I suppose life isn't always perfect and roll you know roses and and whatever um, and you have to deal with different kind of events and things like that but it's it's having the resilience to cope with them so your support network is really important to to manage your stress and coping your sense of control so if you if you view the world that you're in control rather than everything is out of control, you're more um, likely to be resilient. Your attitude and outlook, your ability to deal with your emotions, your knowledge and preparation. So these are all factors that influ influence your stress tolerance and just identifying what what kind of things you have in them areas that will help you manage your stress. So we have unhelpful thinking. So this can be also called distorted thinking. And we all experience it. I think Kiva would agree. <laughs> we all like, I can't, it's impossible. And, um, you know, we always exaggerate it for ourselves as well, I feel. We all, oh, I'm, I failed, I'm no good. Um, and I suppose it's kind of recognising that you're in this negative self-talk and that can cause you more stress rather than having um changing it around and, and creating it as a positive rather than a negative yeah so do you find yourself having unhelpful thinking habits i think it's a, it's a natural thing a lot of people would experience that uh, just trying to recognize it as important yeah yeah so we have a few there yes and I think I think that is just shows you that everyone does you know is vulnerable to negative self-thought and unhelpful thinking habits and um, 
and it's just just trying to recognize it because it does happen and, and thoughts come into your your mind um where you can't you don't have control over them but it's just recognizing them and saying this is unhelpful for me and changing it around i think uh, do uh, we have, do a, we question have a question there, there? Yeah, um, I think if you were talking with them and Echo. Perfect, OK. Um, yeah, I can hear the echo. I'll mute myself and see if that changes it. OK, we might move on. Is it better, Nakiva? Do you want to put your thumbs up or, or is it still a problem? Um, I'm not sure. Is it echoing now? So it's, but it's OK, we can go on with the thing. Yeah, I don't know what, what's different today because this is what we normally I'm using the same laptop. I don't know if it's my problem or um, anything. Um, so we have examples of challenge how to challenge your unhelpful thinking habits. So um, we have all or nothing thinking. So, um, you know, this is black or white thinking. Um, so just recognizing that and challenging that this is all or nothing thinking. There has to be something in the middle. Then jump into conclusions. So two plus two equals five. So just recognizing that you're doing that as well. Labeling yourself as as you know different things: stupid, lazy, and um, unproductive, and things like that. So recognizing that that's not helpful. Um, disqualifying the positive. So if you get you know praise from others, um, don't put it in the bin. Accept it and say, oh, I'm doing quite well. Um, here, um. Then there is overgeneralizing as well. So everything is always rubbish. Nothing good ever happens. So you're just overgeneralizing on the negatives. Um, so there's a few more there. So there's um, magnification. So you're looking at if something happens, you know, that's quite small, like, you know, not answering one question or forgetting to answer a question in the exam. I'm going to fail the whole exam because I missed one question like that's, you know, magnification on one little one little area of your exam. So just identifying your unhelpful thinking habits and challenging them. Um, so there's a few tips to help you cope up, which we'll talk about um, throughout the session. So there's challenging your unhelpful thinking habits, facing your fears, relaxation, breathing, and there's also visualization. And it's, I suppose, figuring out, figuring out which one of these um, tips can help you with stress. There might be a few that you might want to use or there might be one in particular that you find helpful and we're not kind of saying this one works. It's really up to you to kind of figure out which which is the best for you. So overcoming unhelpful thinking styles. So I suppose this, as I was saying, you identify and notice it and um, you challenge it, challenge it. So not all thoughts that come into your mind are true. So say if I failed my exams, is this true? And trying to challenge it and um, rewrite it. So come up with a new, more realistic and kindful um, thought to, your, to yourself and um, be mindful. You can also just simply observe the thought without judgment. So you can just let it pass, let the thought come in and let it go. Or you can also distract yourself from it. So you can identify the unhelpful thought and distract yourself with, you know, something you like or, um, you know, something that you enjoy, a healthy kind of activity like a walk or something. So I suppose there's different kind of ways there so you can challenge it, rewrite it, be mindful and just let it pass or distract yourself from it. So that's challenging your thoughts. So this is a question and I don't think Kiva has seen this. I put this in. Um, so this is just a question. So say, for example, if a person was, you know, on trial um, for a crime, would the jury um, base their opinion on the fact? So like the DNA and um, some witness, whatever, uh, CCTV, you know, the fact, or would they just go on the personal opinion of themselves? So I don't really like that person. They look scary. <laughs> they feel scary. Um, so, yeah. So what would what would the jury base their decision on? Would it be the fact and the evidence or would it be the personal opinion of the person? So we have a few for fact. What do you think, Eva? I, I go with fact as well. I think that's a very nice one, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just kind of this is another way to challenge your thoughts. And we'll kind of talk about this, this in a minute. 
Um, but as you can see there, that's it is it they would and hopefully that's what the justice system does. They base their they base their things on fact um and evidence, concrete evidence um as well. So that's great. Yeah, so in a court case, so the facts are evidence that supports the truth truth. They're disputed, they're undisputed, more so, um, and they're driven by rational thought. Um then opinion, so it's a personal view, it can be argued and it's driven and reinforced by our emotions. That's what our opinion is. So at stressful times, uh, we are driven by our emotion and our opinion. So as you can see, so our emotions drive our opinions, our personal opinions, and also opinions drive our emotions. So this happens at times of stress, so it's identifying that our emotions and opinions are working together and can disregard the fact. So it's trying to identify what's the facts in, in your in your situation. So for example, um, I think I failed my exams. So the fact of this is which opposes that thought. So you attended all your classes, passed all your assignments, stuck to your study plan and passed all my midterm tests. Um, opinion, feel like I didn't do enough and I could have done better. So we can see that there's really four kind of concrete facts and then two opinions that are not really that factual and you can't really base your judgment on. So based on the F evidence, do you think the student passed or failed their exams due to the four, um, four solid facts and two personal opinions? So we have two that passed. Anyone else? What do you think? What do you think, Eva? Oh, I think that they might have been in with a good chance, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's looking back and, and looking back on all your hard work and yeah. identifying all the work that you do put in. Um, yeah, so hopefully, yeah. So um, I suppose, yeah, just looking at the facts and even yourself when you're doing something looking at all the time you spent studying, all the time you did, you know, whatever uh, for your college work um, and I identifying that. Sorry, if I was just going to say it can take some time to get used to doing that process. So don't feel like it's something you're going to be comfortable with straight away. Yeah, um, it's a skill to learn. So take your time with it and just be mindful that it can take some time and to yeah. be kind to yourself as you're learning it. Yeah, so that's great. That was just a nice kind of example that that I like to do with students. Um, I think it's a nice way to put your put your thought in the courtroom and see what see what the jury will come out with. <laughs> it's a nice one, all right. Yeah. So there's also stop, um, which is another um, kind of challenging um, exercise to challenge thoughts. So S T O P P. So the S stands for stop and step back. So you don't act immediately, you pause, okay? You don't, because sometimes I suppose when, when something gets into your mind, you can get angry or get agitated or even, you know, get very upset. Um, so just stop, step back and take a breath. So T for take a breath and notice you're breathing in and out. Um, o for observe. So what am I actually thinking and feeling? So what, what are these things that are, are going through my mind and going through my body? And question it, is it a fact or is it an opinion? Um, then P for pull back. So you need to gain some perspective on this. Is this just me overthinking? Is this an actual fact? And also, if your friend was in this situation, if your friend was feeling this way, uh, whatever whatever your issue is or whatever you're getting stressed about, what would you tell your friend? Would you tell your friend that you're use they're useless, that you know they're stupid, they're lazy? You probably wouldn't. You're always much harsher on yourself than others. So it's just being that bit kinder to yourself and putting yourself in in the view that you are some your friend. What would you say to your friend? And say that say that to yourself, um, because I think we are our worst enemy at times, aren't we, Kiva? Def definitely, yeah. We can be so harsh to ourselves when really it's not necessary or it's not needed and it's just 
trying to recognize that and be a bit kinder to ourselves going forward like you said yeah um and then the final p is practice what works so um you know after this you know webinar you might have more more kind of um idea of how to how to kind of manage stress and and use the ones that work um, and you find most helpful so that that's the stop um there how's this moving for me so breathing is another one can you see that kiva yeah i can see that yep and you're, you're gone off the screen so bre breathing is another exercise it only takes it like a few seconds and you can do it anywhere um, and it actually is so beneficial to everyone because sometimes you can kind of forget to breathe and and it does really help you relax and it's really helpful at stressful times um, and you also should practice it quite regularly throughout the day so you know um you know before a lecture that you might be a bit anxious with before an exam so just kind of getting into your daily routine um, and it, it definitely is good to to do and also with this as well you do need you know practice to learn the skill and help you help you um, manage your stress and, and relax more so it definitely needs practice even though breathing we all breathe but it's just that deep breathing um, is is good so this is an exercise that Nicole actually um, gave us Kiva um, and this is, I suppose, it's it's if you're starting off deep breathing, um, so you you just get your your hand and you would uh, breathe in, go up your thumb, and then you come out, and then you breathe in, and come out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and just follow your fingers and do that as many times as you feel, and that's a really good guide you know, for, for breathing and, and getting your breathing um, into a good rhythm. Um, and it's really easy to, you can do it, you can do it any time, um, but it's just to kind of practice, practice um, then breathing exercises. And it's a lovely one to have if you're in a lecture or if you're, you know, in, in with other people, it's a nice one to have there as a backup to, to have. Mm. So that's breathing. So visualization is also, um, really good um some people use it more than others some people mightn't be too keen on it um but um if you kind of engage with it it can be really good so you do need to kind of build a picture in your mind um and have that in your mind's eye so i suppose what you would kind of think about would be you know a safe place or a relaxing place like you know the beach or um your bed or wherever wherever you'd find relaxing. What would you kind of visualise Kiva if you were um, doing visualisation? I have a willow tree down the bottom of my garden. So that's kind of my, that's my little area that I would always go to. So that's kind of when I'm visualising something, it's somewhere that's uh, it's a steady, safe place that's always available. Um, so if it's a spot in your house or a friend's house or, you know, something that's somewhere you've never been before, even somewhere where you, you, you'd love to go. Um, yeah, that's kind of the ones I would use. Yeah, I would use, I would use, that's why I just picked the background. I would use something like, you know, a beach where, you know, you can feel, and I, you're bringing in your senses, I, you can feel the sand on your, on your feet. You can hear the sea, you can, you can hear the, you know, the seagulls or whatever. And yeah. it's just kind of visualizing that um, and becoming, going into that picture and, and feeling safe and relaxed. Um, in it so I suppose it, it doesn't matter where where you choose um but I suppose just just to maybe have something that you feel do feel safe in yeah. you can also use goal rehearsal or visualization as goal rehearsal so say if you have you know a lot of sports players would use this and performers um you would close your eyes and actually visualize yourself doing playing the game or performing so you can do this within exams or whatever you feel necessary to. So you just sit down and you just think about you doing that skill um, or behaviour that you want to achieve. Um, and then you just keep practising it in your mind. And hopefully when you get to that situation, you'll be less, less anxious and less stressed about it. And um, so just kind of 
imagine yourself doing it and what will you say and how will you feel and kind of question yourself throughout it um you know who is there who will i see um and hopefully that that will reduce your your anxiety um so that that's really good and it, it is proven to work and i know a lot of you know sports players would use it you know runners might use it to just visualize the line and have that in their mind and pretend they're running um in in their mind's eye um and that'll help them you know when they get out the olympic games or whatever um so definitely if, if you have something that you that you're nervous about doing definitely kind of close your eyes get in a comfortable position and practice using visualization and and imagining um doing it in your in your mind's eye So this is, um, I suppose, one of the last questions. Um, so what exercise would you try when you're feeling stressed that we covered today? So would you use the STOPP, the stop, the court case, the deep breathing, the visualization? Um, I should have put other there if, if anybody had any ideas, but I, any other, you know, personal ones that you'd, you'd kind of use yourself that we didn't cover today you can put it in the chat there and Kiva can let me know is there any other ones Kiva that you would you would use I'm trying to think now so the kind of things I would do myself would be kind of you know going outside getting a bit of fresh air kind of talking it through with myself as if I if I can't contact a friend I just kind of go more so like towards the court case kind of okay this is you know yourself this is not true blah 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 and kind of go through it that way mm. um i think the deep breathing one is definitely one that's very handy or the grounding exercises so bringing yourself back going through the five senses and just kind of taking stock of what's happening around you yeah um yeah they'd be the kind of ones i would based on what you've you've provided actually i think they're the some really useful ones yeah uh, and i suppose you don't have to rely on one it depends on the situation and as you just see see there from the poll as well that um you know different ones people will prefer different ones so yeah. uh, we're not telling you this is the one this is amazing like um definitely try try them out and see see which ones uh, you would you would kind of benefit from and that you actually enjoy doing because there's no point doing the exercise oh look i have to do this deep breathing now the effort of that that's not yep. going to make you relaxed if you don't enjoy enjoy whatever exercise yep. you're doing. So try and pick one that you enjoy as well and you don't yep. mind and you kind of take yourself. It's all about self-care as well and um, yep. you know managing your stress. stress. And even, I suppose, you know, college-wise, um, time management and organisational skills will be really helpful for you to avoid getting overwhelmed so say if you're kind of leaving everything to the last minute having good planning and prioritizing things in advance so you kind of do one thing at a time um rather than leaving everything to the night before that can be really stressful so yeah, time management is definitely linked in with 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 stress as well of course yeah other things I've not I've heard are quite useful you know using a gratitude journal or for some people who enjoy art maybe uh you know mindful coloring things like that can be quite useful as well just to make some time for yourself and have those kind of activities as you're you know taking a, taking a step back yeah and definitely having that time out as well from study i know online learning it's very difficult um but definitely setting limits for yourself so i always say to students my hours and your hours key are nine to five yeah. we shut down and then we have the evening to relax so making sure that you make time for self care and switching off. You don't. We don't expect you to be studying twelve hours a day. Like that's yeah. not realistic, and like you won't. You won't be able to do that for the whole academic year. That's no. that's not not what like a student should be like. Um. So definitely like setting time limits for yourself and um and managing your time is is really good. And like that gratitude journal is is good as well and artwork. Even on myself during lockdown, I did, you know, what was it? Colour, it was like painting by numbers. Um, oh, I yeah. Used, I used to do that after work and it was just a nice kind of way to relax and switch off from work as well, especially when the lockdown kind of happened. So definitely 
if you feel like artwork is, is definitely something that you can lean on, there's, there's loads of things and simple things that you don't need big art sets that you can just buy a little colouring book, whatever. So there's also some useful apps um, that you can use and these are two I kind of found and I did find them useful myself and I suppose it's if you're kind of starting off some mindfulness and things like that if you're interested in that. Um, so Smiling Mind, you can pick exercises so there's different ones for like there's one on study that has different exercises for like being students, there's one for sleep and um, you know exercise and things like that and it, it's really kind of there's different exercises in there so there's listening to music there's you know movement and um, exercises and things like that and there's and there's meditation and and also mindfulness that you just listen to and they don't take that long and um, my life is another app that's quite good that's it's also free as well as finding mind um, and what you do in this one is Basically, they ask you like how you're feeling, what emotions you're feeling, and then they'll give you the most kind of relevant exercise for you to do based on your emotions. Um, so it could be like, like there is a gratitude one and um, there is, you know, like uh, a grounding techniques. There's different ones that come up and you do get options and they only last maybe five minutes. So. I, I'm not saying spend an hour doing mindfulness or whatever, but I suppose if you needed that some assistance with doing that, these are kind of apps that have short exercises, five, 10 minutes at a time that you can choose to do and, and see you get on. And it's sometimes good to have have that prompt as well um, on the app um, to kind of help you and guide you to do the mindfulness and things. So I suppose just just to kind of find finish off um, if you're kind of feeling anxious, anxious and things like that um, it is it is normal and, and students are kind of feeling a bit more stressed um, over this uh, over these weeks um, so there's there is a counselling service on campus and um, the Samaritans um, your mental health and there's other social anxieties and mental health.ie. So if you feel that that's something that you um, need assistance with, um, myself and Kiva are also here if you need to reach out. Um, so that's that's really it. Um, so and just remembering that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. Um, and I think that's it. So thanks very much. We might stop recording now, uh, Kiva, please. Thank you.